In this video, we're going to be walking through mask channels in Negotiator. We're going to be covering what masks are, what mask channels are, how to use mask channels, and the various things that you should know when using them. Let's get started. So what are masks? Masks are a way of deciding where something should be shown and where something should be hidden. A good example of a mask is an emission mask. In the Go Material tab, we have this option right here called Emission for Main Color. This will pretty much add emissiveness from the main color using the main color texture. So if we set emission from main color to 1, we're going to be adding an emissive layer of main color on top of the avatar. But what if we have an emission mask? And that emission mask makes it so that only these markings are emissive. Well, that's what we can set up here. So I have set up a marking mask channel right here. And what that does is it constrains this emission from main color to only these markings. So if I went, went ahead and drove up this value right here, as you can see, only those markings are changing. And this mask looks like this. And as you can see, the white parts correspond to where the markings are, and the black parts correspond to where they aren't. And this translates to this emission from main color being applied into the white areas and not applied into the black areas. And you can have a range of grays in between, so you can kind of have half hidden, half shown. That's what masks are. They let us decide where to show something and where to hide something and where to show half of something. So with that in mind, what are mask channels? Mask channels are a global masking system that contain numerous masks for you to customize that you can then use across multiple places on the goose shader. So as an example, in that emission from main texture, what I did was I created a, a mask texture right here and I dragged in one of my masks right here. And then I used the red channel of that mask as a way to mask out the emission from main color. And because mask channels is a global system, what I can do is I can use this mask texture anywhere else. So for example, I can decide that, hey, I actually want some kind of normal map to be masked out by that same mask. So I can set up a normal map, right? For example, this one, right? And then I can go into mask channel and select that same mask. And now that mask only shows up where that mask texture tells it to. Let's go ahead and customize this material, have some nifty things using mask channels as an example, and throughout the process we'll learn more about mask channels. I would like to start off by adding a little madcap on the rim right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rim mask channel right here. I'm going to enable it. If I preview it, as you can see, this is going to show things around the edges of the avatar. I can ahead, go ahead and customize this, make it so that it's really just the edges of the avatar. As you can see, if we move the camera around, it's always the edges. We can use this for things like rim lighting as well. Stop previewing the mask, and you can use these buttons right here to preview masks. They're very useful. Let's go into the glue material. Let's find a mat cap slot right here. Find a mat cap. I'm going to be using this one right here. Let's go ahead and open the mat cap setting and pick the rim mask channel right here. And now we're masking this mat cap by the rim mask. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this rim mask to be the mat cap rim. Now it's going to show up here in the drop down so we can know what kinds of masks we're going to be using. Now I want to add another mat cap, but this mat cap I want to only show up on the inside of the avatar and not on the edges. I pretty much want the inverse of this mask. So how do we do that? Well, let's first off find our mat cap that we want to add. I'll use this one right here. And it's since this is a transparent mat cap, I'm going to add alpha as mask. As you can see, the mat cap has been applied. But now I'm going to apply that same rim mat cap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert it using this button right here. Now it only shows up on the inside of the avatar and not the outside edges. And we can go ahead and preview that using this preview button right here. As you can see, this mat cap is now going to be only shown on the inside of the mesh. And now let's say I want to add a little wrinkle normal map to this avatar. So let's go ahead and add a wrinkle normal map. And as you can see, I think that this is a little bit too many wrinkles. And they're just kind of sitting there, just static. They're not really doing anything. We could try and go ahead and adding a little bit of scroll to it. But I still think that this is kind of like a little bit ugly. And this needs to be toned down a bit. So what can we do? Well, with mask channels, we can go ahead and mask this by the goo mask channel. So let's go ahead and find the mask channel, the secondary normal map, and select the goo right here. And now 
what that'll do is that'll only show this normal map where the goo is active and moving around. And that can be a little bit confusing, and this is again why we have previews. So we can go ahead and click the little preview button right here, and we'll see what this mask is actually going to be doing. So this mask is directly tied to the goo movement right here, so if we go ahead and change the movement speed, for example, the changes are going to be reflected in the goo map. And of course, we can go ahead and invert the mask, but I'm going to be keeping it like this. We can also set this to drip, for example, so this normal map will only show up on the drip. But as we can see, that this, this normal map right now is not really showing up that much on the drip. That's because the drip mask isn't that strong. And you might run into these problems sometimes. And thankfully, we have some solutions to that. Each mask channel right here has strength, gain, and contrast settings that you can use to adjust the values of the mask at the usage site. So for example, in this case, I know that I can kind of get the result I want by turning up the strength of the mask. And as you can see, the normal map is showing up, not very heavily, so we can like increase the tiling right here. But yeah, as you can see, the mask is definitely showing up right now. I don't quite like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to goo, because I like how the goo mask looks on this. And now I want to do something interesting right here. I want the emission map to be masked by the goo, right? So it'll kind of show in and out as the goo moves around. But I also want the emission to be shown whenever somebody touches my avatar and touch reactivity kicks in. And for the second one, we have this touch reactivity interaction mask right here, which does just that. It'll show things in places where touch reactivity is active. But then, how do we combine this goo mask with a touch reactive mask? How does that work? Well, thankfully, we have these blend masks right here. I'm going to enable touch reactivity interaction. And then I'm going to enable blend one. And what these blend masks do is they let us combine two masks into a new mask entirely using a blend mode. There's a couple of blend modes for you to choose, and all of them are documented in this little documentation button right here. So you can go ahead and read up on them some more if you'd like. But for my use case right now, where I want the mission to show up on the goo or whenever the avatar gets touched in that area, I'm going to want to set the blend mode here to add, to add the goo mask and then the touch reactivity mask together. So now, if we were to go ahead and preview the goo mask, as you can see, it's the goo mask. And then we can go ahead and preview the touch reactivity mask. And as you can see, it's just a touch reactivity mask. If we were to move around this platform, as you can see, it shows up where touch reactivity shows up. I'm going to increase the strength of it a little bit, so let's set it to 30. And then let's preview the blend. As you can see, it's the combination of the goo and touch reactivity. So now let's go ahead and set our emission to be using this blend mask, mask one. And now I'm going to go ahead and rename this to goo plus tr. And now, as you can see, the feet are always going to have that emission show up, right? Then if we move this around, we see that the emission shows up in places where our avatar is interacting with things. It's going to be more obvious if we go ahead and add a little sphere that we can move around here as well. As you can see, I can use the sphere to show this emission. But that goo mask is still moving around and doing things. And so we can combine things. And on top of that, we can go ahead and keep stacking these blends as well. So let's say I also want the emission to show up whenever I get close to the avatar. And for that, we can use a distance mask. The distance mask is going to show things depending on the distance to the pixel. As you can see, the closer I get to it, the mask shows up more and more. So we can go ahead and enable another blend mask right here. And then say, set the blend mode to add. Set the foreground mask to goo tr, and then set the background to a distance mask. And now, if we preview the mask, we have the blend mask here, the first blend mask, the goo plus tr, and then the closer we get, we add the distance mask. Right? Isn't that neat? And now we can go ahead and set the emission to use this as well. And now, the closer I get to the avatar, the more the emission shows up. Right? But as you can see, the emission starts to fade in. And you can go ahead and do crazy things here. And for example, why not also use the same mask here for the normal map? Why not? Let's try that. Blend mask 2. And as you can see, if we zoom in, the normal map shows up. And it'll also show up with touch reactivity now as well. Another useful thing about mask channels is that they tell you where they're being used. So for example, right here, 
we can see that none of these mash channels are being used except for the scroll one. And as you can see, if we expand the tab, we can see that this is being used by the first emission slot and the secondary normal map. And as you can see, it is in fact showing a normal map and an emission as it scrolls by. So that's the power of mass channels. We can combine them and we can use them multiple times. We can invert them and we can preview them. Very, very cool. And so all these mass channels right here have documentation available right here in these little documentation buttons. Every mass channel can be copied and reset. Can, for example, copy this uh, rim mask right here and paste it into the third one. Because why not? And of course, you can do this copy and pasting across materials as well. Not every mask channel is going to be in this mask channel dropdown. Some of them don't need configuration or enabling. So for example, these four right here, Goo, Drip, Goo, Goo Drip, Backfaces, and Is Audio Link Available? They don't really need any configuration, so they're over here by default. And you can just use them without having to configure or enable anything. And if you'd like to learn more about what the, these do, you can go ahead and consult the documentation right here. We also have a whole explanation of mass channels right here in the manual. Goes in depth on various things. Now, mass channels are a very expansive utility, and so it can be a little bit daunting of like, what can I do with this? If you're looking for any examples of what you can do with mass channels, please go ahead and take a look at our showcase scene right here. We have quite a bit of materials available for you, and a lot of them use mass channels to some degree. For example, the lava one right here, if we go ahead and double click on it to find the body, then look at the material, we'll see that it uses mass channels quite a bit. And you can go ahead and take a look at what these do. So you can search for inspiration here. We also have an ideas and example showcase scene, which showcases individual smaller ideas that you can do with the goo shader. For example, emission mask by rim, emission mask by retroactivity, etc. All right, let's go ahead and talk about contrast, gain, and strength on mass channels. These values are available at every mass channel you should cite to allow you for more precise control over the mask at the point that it's being used. So as an example, let's go ahead and set up an added emission color and set that to red. And let's mask it by goo drip. And as we can see, we now have a dripping red emissive uh, color right here. We can go ahead and start adjusting these values. As you can see, adjusting the contrast will make it stronger, but also kind of get rid of a little bit of it at the same time. Gain will simply add a value to the mask itself or subtract a value from the mask. So we can increase the base. And then strength simply just sharpens or increases the strength of the mask, as you can see. And so these values are useful in different situations. For example, I find myself using the strength quite heavily whenever I'm just using a simple mask here without any kind of special things to it. Especially on the goo trip, I end up using the strength on the goo trip quite a lot. But for example, then, whenever I want to invert a mask, especially on the goo trip, as you can see, it's kind of not what you expect. So in this situation, the contrast is really useful. For example, if I bump the contrast up, as you can see, we start having a more of a sharper edge here at the goo. But it's not quite what we need yet. So we can go ahead and tweak the gain to kind of adjust this contrast right here so something like that maybe you can go ahead and maybe play with the strength a little bit not quite what we want let's go ahead and adjust contrast strength and gain all at the same time to kind of get the sharp edge that i want on the dripping something like that and as you can see that required me to change all these three different settings and this is something that you might need to do as well this is just something you're going to need to play around with and get an intuition for we of course have detailed explanations of the math behind these and the documentation for these, but you're really just going to want to get intuition for them as you're using them. And of course, you can go ahead and right click on the mass channel right here to reset this back to normal if you would like to undo your changes. Now let's talk about the strength pre-inversion and post-inversion values right here. These are a little bit of a more advanced feature, but they're very useful in some situations. So these two both control the strength of the mask, but they control it at different stages. So for example, over in the usage sites, we first of all do the inversion math and then apply the sliders. But over here, pre-inversion strength means that we're going to be applying the strength before applying the inversion math. And that leads us to get wildly different results. For example, let's use a mask capsule right here. 
and just position it like this on our body. Now let's set up our added emission color to be using this. I'm going to finish. We're going to set this to red. As you can see, that matches the preview perfectly. But now if we go ahead and invert it, that is now no longer quite what you would maybe expect. But however, in terms of the math, this is exactly what you'd get. This is the negative of that mask, right? But then if we go ahead, and we want to make this black part a little bit stronger so that the edges of this are stronger, right? We can go ahead and try to like adjust the strength right here, but this is not giving us the values that we would like because this is adjusting the strength of the mask after the inversion has been applied. So it's actually strengthening the red parts and not the black parts. So. This is where pre-inversion strength comes in, because this is going to actually now strengthen the value of the mask before the inversion happens. So this gives us the ex results that we'd expect here, as you can see. Whereas post-inversion does not do that. And also the post-inversion right here is pretty much exactly the same as this strength right here. However, this is a global value. So if you have multiple places where you use this capsule mask, you wouldn't have to, for example, animate all of these strength sliders right here, or have them all have oscillators if you would like to adjust the strength of it or hide this mask. You can simply just set this to zero or adjust it to whatever you like. Animate it, oscillate it, whatever. You can use this as a global hide and show or a global adjustment for this mask, as opposed to having to go ahead and adjust it in every usage site. And yeah, that's about it for mask channels. Have fun.